Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is a sequel of my previous videos whereby I have explained what is magnetic circuit and what are the effects of air gap. So if you have not uh, gone through those videos, I recommend that you first of all go through that those videos and then come to this. Here straight away we will go uh, and explain how example number 1.3 uh, in the textbook number two has been solved. So let's straight away jump uh, into the problem 1.3, example 1.3, which has been solved in the book, uh, textbook number two. But we'll try to explain it in uh, simpler terms so it is easier for you to understand. Now for the magnetic circuit of figure 1.6a, so this is the circuit given in figure 1.6a. We have to find some things, but let's see first of all what does the circuit tell. The circuit has the number of turns or coil of turns n, so this is n turns. The current flowing through it is I. The flux linkage, this is the flux linkage is n multiplied by phi so the flux and this and number of turns multiplied so that is actually the total flux we can say uh, which is lambda or flux linkage we also have uh, this permeability uh, is given by uh, given to be infinity that means this the metal part of it does not offer any resistance and to the flow of magnetic flux. There are two gaps. This is gap number one whose gap length is G1 and this is gap number two whose gap length is G2 and the area of cross section of the first one is A1 and the area of cross section of second one is A2. Now we have to find the inductance of the winding. So that is first of all inductance we have to find. And in the second part we have to find the flux density B1 in the gap 1. So flux density here when the winding is carrying a current I. And there is a term here called neglect fringing effect in the air gap. Now what is fringing effect? Let's try to understand. See, when the flux crosses the air gap, there is a tendency of it to bulge, bulge outside. And therefore, the area of cross-section here is more than the area of cross-section here. But when it is saying that neglect the fringing effect, that means the area of cross-section of the air gap is also A1 here and the area of cross-section of this air gap is A2 here. Okay, now if it was a circuit without infinite uh, permeability, then we would have to consider, like this is another example, but then we got to consider two uh, reluctances, one for the core, for this material, and the other for the gap. But since in this case, the reluctance due to core is zero, because of infinite permeability therefore we will just have like in this circuit it would have been just one uh, reluctance due to the air gap so in our circuit since there are two gaps so our circuit equivalent uh, will become something like this so we have the uh, driving source and I and the, due to this air gap the reluctance is R1 and due to this air gap, the reluctance is R2. So this is our equivalent circuit. Okay, so we were here. This is our circuit. These are some of the um, formulas that we'll be using. This has been derived from the uh, previous lectures. Now the total reluctance is equal to the parallel combination of the two gaps. So we can just combine them parallel. 
So R total will be R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. I hope you know how to solve two resistances in parallel, same technique. And phi from the formula, phi is F divided by R total. So F divided by R total. F is the force, which is N into I. And R total, then N into I, and for R total, we write this value here okay now what is R1 and what is R2 so R1 now from again uh, these are the formulas for R if it is an air gap then we just take this formula that is we take the length of the air gap divided by uh, permeability of air mu naught and divided by the area of cross section so we are going to use this in this case this is for the first gap and this is for the second gap okay so now uh, the first part we have to find the inductance of the winding and this is the formula for finding inductance inductance is lambda over i and we have discussed this that lambda the flux linkage is n into phi so we'll plug in that value so inductance will become n phi over i and now we know that phi is n i divided by the equivalent resistance so uh, this is how we write phi and since we need to find phi over i so we bring this i here so phi over i will be n divided by the equivalent resistance or reactance and so for l now we can write this n and there is an n from here so n square this term goes up so r1 plus r2 divided by r1 into r2 and we can further simplify so it can be written like this dividing both by R1, R2 now putting R1 is equal to G1 over mu naught alpha and this formula we can further get this equation in terms of the air gap length area and mu naught so R1 and R2 are replaced by these two equations And again, taking common the common terms, so this is the final value of inductance. Okay, now we come to the B part. We have to find the flux density B1 in gap 1. So this is this part for gap 1 where we have the uh, flux phi 1. These are the formulas again. Now phi 1 we have learnt <coughs> is Ni over R1. Ni over R1 for this branch only. And then R1 is G over mu naught A1. This one here. And manipulating this is the value we get. Now this is for flux phi 1 now we need to find flux density and I'm sure you know that the flux density or density is flux divided by the area of cross section so B1 is phi 1 divided by area of cross section and plugging in the value of phi 1 from here and then further simplifying we get this value uh, for the uh, flux density B1. I hope this gives you an understanding of how to solve this type of a problem.